So humanity faces no greater challenge than addressing the UN's 17 Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs. Now, traditionally, the SDGs have been studied individually, often through a single disciplinary lens. Now, this is despite the fact that there's considerable evidence that they intersect in many ways to contribute to poverty. So let me give you an example. Marginalized communities in low- and middle-income countries often simultaneously face disease, food, water, and energy challenges that mire them in poverty traps. So today, I will argue that what we need is a paradigm shift in the way we conduct and translate science to make transformative progress towards achieving SDGs. Rather than taking the traditional siloed approach, we must embrace the interconnections among the SDGs, taking a systems-based approach, and importantly, develop truly interdisciplinary teams that search for scalable, sustainable, win-win planetary health solutions to multiple SDGs to navigate our planet back towards a safe operating space. Here is the amazing planetary health team that I had the privilege to work with on the, this project, and they really deserve more of the credit than I do. So today, I'm going to provide you with an example of how we discovered and tested a win-win planetary health solution in the Senegal River Basin. Now, the reason we study in this area of the world is because it's a hot spot for schistosomiasis, the disease that we conduct research on. So our innovation in Senegal addresses several planetary boundaries highlighted on this slide. And our research question was, can we reduce disease by removing invasive aquatic vegetation that serves as habitat for parasites that cause human schistosomiasis and offer environmental and societal co-benefits by converting the nuisance vegetation into private goods? So schistosomiasis is the second most debilitating parasitic disease globally behind malaria. It is found predominantly in sub-Saharan Africa and is a major disease burden for children. The parasites shown here are released from snails. They penetrate human skin when humans enter water bodies and they return to water bodies in human urine or feces. Among its many symptoms, it stunts the growth and the cognitive development of children. It can cause loss of liver, intestinal, and bladder function, and unfortunately, even death. So we hypothesize that communities that have lots of agriculture cover around them would have uh, increased fertilizer inputs into their water bodies that would proliferate the submerged invasive aquatic vegetation that serves as the habitat for the snails. And with more snails, we expected more schistosomiasis. Now, we tested this in 23 communities, quantifying many of the variables seen on this slide. So we found strong support for the hypothesized pathway. I'm not going to show you the data due to time constraints. So given that uh, the fertilizer runoff was captured in this submerged vegetation and increased schistosomiasis, we hypothesized that removing it from these water bodies and converting it to compost, livestock feed, and fuel for biodigesters would return the nutrients back to agriculture and increase food, energy, and incomes and reduce disease, pollution, and climate change. So to test this hypothesis, we first gathered baseline data on schistosomiasis levels in school children, as well as snail and plant abundances and information on water quality, and 16 villages that we recruited to a randomized controlled trial. Eight of the villages, we removed the vegetation quarterly, and eight served as unmanipulated controls. All the children were treated for their infections, and we tracked reinfection uh, rates and the effort it took to remove the vegetation. Here's a 90-second video showing some of our results. More than 200,000 people are killed every year by schistosomiasis, a disease that lives in the waterways of developing countries. Today, 200 million people are infected, and over 700 million more are at risk. Treatment is unavailable to most of them, and even then, it's a short-term solution. Snails that transmit this disease live in freshwater vegetation that chokes out water access points. 
The snails release thousands of parasites which enter human hosts through contact with water. Removing the vegetation reduces disease rates among children while increasing open water access for villagers. This has resulted in a 103-fold reduction in snails. We map water access points with drones and satellite images to identify where the vegetation grows. This can facilitate the scaling up of our public health action by targeting schistosomiasis hotspots for ministries of health. We are testing the cost-effectiveness of using harvested vegetation as compost, livestock feed, or fuel for biodigesters that provide gas for cooking and electricity production. The compost has significantly increased crop yields. Villagers are taught methods to sustain this process, meaning this solution has the potential to address water, energy, and food issues, and save lives, well into the future. So every time I watch this video, I uh, have a tremendous sense of gratitude. So uh, to the great people of Senegal, I would just like to say thank you for your generous support on our journey together. So our key findings, uh, control sites had 1.46 times as much schistosomiasis infections and lower wa open water access uh, than the removal sites. And importantly, we have found no long-term effects on water chemistry quality or biodiversity. Now we converted the vegetation to compost, as I showed you in the video, which increased onion and pepper production, independent of the cross-fertilizer and tilling treatments, most likely because the compost likely increased the water holding capacity of the soil. And importantly, the economists on the project demonstrated that the benefits were nine times the costs. So in collaboration with this incredible livestock team and my former postdoc, Lexi Sack, who you all got to meet earlier today, uh, we dried the vegetation to kill the parasites in it, and then we isocalorically substituted it for traditional livestock feed. And then we gave it to sheep, and we showed that when uh, the weight of juvenile and adult sheep was maintained up to 60% substitution on this vegetation. And importantly, this vegetation was 41 to 179 times cheaper than the traditional livestock feed. Now, we also showed that co-digesting the vegetation with cow manure in biodigesters increased the cooking gas quality from those biodigesters. And we now are leveraging the 60,000 biodigester investment in Senegal by, yes, the Swiss government for carbon credits. The goal is to combat climate change by reducing methane emissions from the cow manure, as well as deforestation associated with gathering firewood for cooking fuel. To help scale our innovation, uh, we coupled drone imagery, shown here and here, with satellite imagery to identify hotspots for schistosomiasis. And the remote sensing techniques were quite effective at identifying submerged aquatic habitat for the snails, shown here in fuchsia. So in summary, we provide economic incentives to facilitate sustainable development and return nutrients back to agriculture, closing nutrient loops all while simultaneously helping marginalized communities escape disease, poverty traps, improve food, water, and energy access, and mitigate climate change. Additionally, we provide viable scaling approaches for our innovation. All right, so what are we going to do next? And what are we going to do with the incredibly generous million Swiss francs provided by the Frontiers Planet Prize? Well, we are honing our remote sensing techniques. We intend to test whether communities are capable of sustaining the intervention after education and training. We are planning to test the innovation in other parts of Africa. And finally, we have plans to develop commercially viable scaling approaches. So in conclusion, to make transformative progress towards returning to a safe operating space, there must be a paradigm shift from addressing SDGs individually to embracing their interconnections using a systems-based approach. We hope that this prize will amplify our planetary health innovation for addressing multiple SDGs, and most importantly, inspire the search for other win-win solutions to the many formidable, codependent grand challenges facing humanity. If you'd like to learn more about our project, please visit our website at defuse.nd.edu. Thank you so much for your time and attention, and importantly, 
Thank you, Frontiers Planet Prize, for generating this crucial award and providing me with this life-changing distinction. <laughs>